Hello chess friends, this is Fidi Master Valero for uh, geekswithchess.com and uh, what I'd like to show you today is one of the most important and I'd like to say one of the most relevant teams that we have to keep in mind most often when we want to have a more successful strategy in most of the middle game positions. Uh, I call it the ultimate strategy and the ultimate strategy is all about improving. Improving the pieces is one of the things that helps the chess player to achieve most. To achieve space, to improve his plan, to increase his possibilities, and even to get excellent resources to attack against the opponent. Improving the pieces is basically the most important part, the most relevant kind of idea that we have to use if you want to be if you want to be very successful with our own ideas. And basically uh, the, posi the position that we see on the board was played between two very strong chess players, Short and Gelfand. Grandmaster Nigel Short from England was actually having white pieces and the Israeli and Grandmaster Gelfand had black. Uh, in fact it occurred this position in which after White's, uh, uh, after Black's last move of bishop takes f6, so there was a pawn on the e5, Black played f6, e takes f, bishop takes f6. The position, uh, in fact, reached certain kind of, uh, of, of an important point in which it is very relevant and very valuable for White to decide where and how he'll be planning. In fact, Black's key idea right here is to develop his own bishop on the d7, move the queen out of the way, connect these two rooks and get the possibility to play either rook e8 or either rook y8 to c8. That's how he's going to get those two rooks on the right places. And then he'll be in a quite good position to possibly move out with e5, move up with e5 actually, or go on with b5, move his queen down, push a pawn. You know, there are a lot of different ideas available. Now, uh, the thing is that what white, this, what white should do in this current moment, in the position itself, is to figure out a good way to counter. Black's main plan is to develop his pieces and then launch an attack on the, sa on the area of the board where, we, where he has more space, the queen side. Every time when we see a new position on the board, it's a good idea if we start with estimating the opponent's plan at first. And then as soon as we've done that, we should think about our own. Uh, in fact, creation of a plan always starts with the simple question, which area of the board do I have as more preferable and where would I like to attack most at? In this moment, where White would like to go and where he would like to continue his own plan is very simple. He'd like to go on the side of the board where he's seemingly more prepared. Which is that? Well, it's the king's side. Why? Well, because of a couple of reasons, but the most important of them is that the black king is a little bit worse there. And most of his pieces, like the two, the, the pawns, the couple of pawns around, the pieces on the back right, they're not really prepared. So that in case White decides to or starts uh, launches an attack on the king side, uh, in fact, Black can handle it and he can oppose against White's own initiative and the plans to attack Black's king and his pawns. So uh, the question, the first question that we have to start with here is: What is the best way, or what has to be the most important or the most appropriate opportunity for White to uh, go on? and advance his pieces against Black's King. It isn't such an easy task to say really how this should go, but we can eventually think about it. Now there are a couple of different ideas available. Some of them are of course connected with the simple moves like Knight G3 and something else. But I'd like to say that at first what needs to be done right here is to start the plan with improving of the pieces. Many people really don't consider that improvement of the pieces is the first chapter of our plan. The first segment idea, the first idea segment that we have to follow and we have to continue it. In this moment, what I believe White needs to do is to continue and improve his own pieces. Now, how he could do that is a different question, but the important is that he can fight for it. The first move that he decided to continue was amazing. The first was King h1. Now, if we look at this position at the, at the moment, we find that what has a worst pace piece that really needs to be improved. Often it's a good idea every two to three moves, and so to look at our pieces in the valid to assess which one really needs improvement. And for instance, if we look at the knight on the e2, we find out that this knight really needs a better square. The passively placed knight would much prefer to be on f3 right now instead of standing on e2, so that from e3, where it will still hit the d4 pawn eventually on black, and also has the aggressive possibility of moving onto the g5 or even uh, getting himself onto the e5 spot. At first it, seemed it seems difficult for white to arrange this piece setup, but short with white 
just uses a little imagination and it's so it's it's one it's it's so easy once you see it. Then I will reappear via G1 and it's amazing how often the background in such positions could be used to improve a piece's position. It's amazing. So every time when you begin your plan or your ideas or your activity, begin with the question, where would I like to have my pieces and where would I like to improve them? And now the most important is that White would like to get his own knight from G1. He'd like to bring it up to F3 and he'd like to attack or eventually damage the block position in some way after that. After King H1, Black decided to promote with A5. The plan of A5 connects with A4 and the possibility to trap down the White Bishop. In fact, White is protecting it with his own A4 move, but at least this pawn on A4 could more or less become like a kind of a weakness on which Black might want to attack and do something against. So after A5, A4. Black played now queen to d6, and the next move of white was very suitable. He played knight back to g1. Looks very interesting here. In fact, uh, after continuing with the move of uh, knight back to the g1 square, white would really want to have his own knight standing on the f3. And it's not only because the knight is going to stand better, but it's also because later on, after knight g1 to f3, queen to g3, Rook 8 e1, this knight will have the capability to set up on the e5. And that might help him to add pressure against g6 eventually. White's piece will be very well placed and lined. And after continuing with knight back to the g1 square, bishop d7, white played the move of knight f3. And now we see everything is very strong. It's quite instructive how the knight now plays an instrumental role in white's winning the game in white winning the game. And Black was really stuck here. He didn't know exactly where to go. He played knight b4. I think that this is just overlooking a tactical idea. But in any case, uh, what else Black can do? He can't push the e pawn because d5 will be very weak, and he can't do anything around this king side to prepare even better. So after knight b4, White uses another principle. During the time when you're improving your pieces and setting your pieces, to, uh, setting them together, also consider these little moves with which you're going to blockade. Or, to a certain extent, make your opponent's plan a little bit more difficult to come. What happened after knight b4 is that white decided to play queen f2. With his own move, he is directly attacking against the d4 pawn from black. And actually he will be intending to play either bishop c3 or bishop e3. And most of his pieces will be really well placed and quite nicely positioned so that he can uh, launch some threats or do something uh, aggressive against black. So as soon as he played the move of queen f2, black did queen c5, and then white played the move of bishop to c3. Look at this. Right now, the pawn cannot take because it's spin, which forces the black knight to come back, and it's a really good success, making the opponent's pieces start coming backwards. All that white needs to do now is to continue improving and bringing the pieces into the area where white is stronger. Once you have decided on which area you would like to attack, bring as many pieces as you can out there. This is exactly what white wants to do now. As many as he can. First the rook, now the bishop. Black played knight before, then the queen comes up, and then after black's move of b5, finally, when we have everything improved, we call that a focus or a concentration of the pieces on a given area. We don't wait. There is no second invitation from black. Let's just break through. The move of f5 helps white now, white to get the ability to destroy the e-pawn, to open a file. And in the same time with this, he opens actually the way of the road of the bishop. Now, white doesn't hurry to do the, any, any of those moves with the rook or the bishop. He wants to keep them for later. But right here, he decides to bring up the knight onto the e5 square and then to exchange a to b5. Queen dicks to b5. And then the move was rook takes f5. And now we see that black is completely useless. None of his pieces are in the right condition or having the capability to deal with white's powerful rook, the queen on the side, and the threats. And the major idea is that he's going with on the king's side straightforward. King h8, and now what do we do? When we have everything prepared and on the right side, eliminate the main defender. That was what actually people said happens to be the most powerful way of, of, of actually achieving our success. When the Black King came back on the h8 square, White's next move, in fact, helped him to eliminate the only defender, Rick takes f6, eliminating the defenses, and after Rick takes f, knight <clears throat> g4. Black speeds are so unimproved and uncoordinated that once the move of knight g4 really comes up and the idea of queen e5 goes on, None of his own pieces are really in the condition to help him sustain some 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 good some good positioning of the pieces. Rook f5 and then knight h6. That's just the end. When the rook moves away, like it moved away on the h5, white also utilizes his own queen. 
Now, the fact is that threats like queen f6 and then queen f8 are really tremendous, and none of the black other pieces, like his queen, the bishop, the, the rooks, or even the knight, are in the condition to help black's king to save. After queen f4, he simply resigned. And I find it extraordinary how easy it is to manage our plan when we think about improving of the pieces. The problem is that many players really don't think about it. They don't consider doing this more often in their games. So, if you do, you have always one more advantage in your opponent. You'll be always one more step than him. And you will know that the success of every plan, no matter what it is or where it is, is always depending on the coordination and the improvement of the pieces initially. So use that principle and be successful.